Hello everyone and welcome back to our city Lakewood. Today's episode we've got a couple things that we need to take care of and you may notice what one of those things is by looking at the icons that are starting to spread throughout the city. We're seeing a lot of these not enough goods to sell icons, both the tier 1 and tier 2 with the red background. So these red icons are indicating that the issue is starting to become critical and the buildings are about to be abandoned. Now these issues are a result of us removing the industrial area over here in episode 24, which I think was two episodes prior to this one. And at the time, I had originally thought that we would be able to import enough of the goods to support the commercial businesses in the city, but that's turning out to be not quite the case. And more importantly, we are also starting to see icons on our emergency shelters. We are starting to see the not enough food icon. So because we are no longer producing any goods within the city, we also have to rely on imports of food to these emergency shelters. The food within the emergency shelter actually decays slowly over time, so it requires a relatively continuous resupply of food to these shelters. Now this is a problem in the event of any sort of natural disaster hitting the city, we won't have enough food for our citizens to survive within the emergency shelters. So I want to make sure that I fix that sooner rather than later. And so the plan for that, uh, originally I I honestly, at this point, I forget what episode it was, uh, but we had talked about developing uh, this kind of area over here as our industrial area. But before we do that, I had talked about putting in an oil industry to take advantage of this oil reserve that's on this side of the highway. So what we're going to do is on the northern side of the highway over here, we are going to develop a temporary industrial area to support the commercial businesses and emergency shelters of the city. And then on the southern side of the highway over here, we are going to develop our oil industry and uh, deplete the oil reserve before we start uh, developing our industrial area in a future episode. All right, so first things first, I think it's in our best interest as well as our city's best interest that we take care of the not enough goods and especially the not enough food icons that are starting to pop up throughout the city. And as I mentioned, in order to do that, we are gonna create a temporary industrial area over here. If you'll recall from previous episodes, so anything uh, before episode 24, the industrial area that we had over here, it really wasn't that big, and near the end it was mostly composed of recycling centers to support the city. We can go ahead and we can take a look at the city statistics window, and we can see that our industrial area was only about 800 squares. So we had 844 over here, and I think this big dip right here was from the tsunami that hit the city and then we recovered to about 800 afterwards. So uh, at that time, I don't recall seeing any not enough goods or not enough food icons throughout the city. So I think an industrial area of around 800 squares should be enough to support the city. So what we'll do is we will create an industrial zone and we will zone a little bit and let the city equilibrate and get used to the industrial zoning that we've done and see if we're still starting to see some of the icons throughout the city and then zone more if we need to, or not zone anymore at all, if it seems like what we have will be able to support the city. I'm going to take the quick and easy route since this is going to be temporary, and I am going to just use one of the pre-made cloverleaf intersections or cloverleaf interchanges so that I can put one right in around here so that I can have a direct connection from our industrial area to the highway, as well as a direct connection from our oil industry to the highway. And now, unfortunately, the highway itself, uh, this is the default highway going through the area. It's, uh, it's not exactly very parallel. Uh, it gets a little bit better around here, uh, which is something that I believe I put in. It does have the sound barrier on the side. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it's something that I put in when I made the interchange over here. So we are going to have to, unfortunately, delete uh, some pretty big sections of the highway for right now just to try and line everything up. I think the most parallel section is right around here. So I'm going to start from there and just pull the highway back quite a distance. And then I am going to, as I said, just use the default cloverleaf interchange and I'm going to curve it a little bit up. Not too much. See if I can line it up a little bit better with the traffic that's on the ground there. Actually, let's, let's pull it away a little bit, just so that I can have a little bit more freedom. And I think right about there. That looks pretty lined up for what we have on the cars and the ground there. 
And then we're just going to connect everything back up with the highway. I think it would be better for us to go straight across here. And then just delete some more of this other highway. Let's do this last little bit here. Road guidelines aren't showing up very well, so I'm going to just have to kind of guess. That looks pretty good. Just make sure I go back and I uh, adjust the direction of the highway. Everything looks like it's in the right direction. And the highway, I don't think it looks any worse than what was there before. Um, I think, if anything, it looks a little bit better. So eventually, uh, once we kind of do something a little bit more permanent in the area, I'd, I'd like to fix this, this section through here and line this section up over here a little bit better. Uh, but for now, what we have is functional. So I will leave it as it is until we get to developing these areas over here. Okay, uh, as for the transition from the highway to our industrial area, we're going to go back to our, I, I guess as default at this point, our default transition. So we are going to just use the uh, two-lane road for now, and we are going to extend this highway connection uh, one more grid square away. Same with the other side. We're going to connect these two together to create a grid just on the other side so that we can start a road in the middle between those two lanes. And then we're going to connect everything up into a bit of a triangle. We're going to go back and we're going to delete this original segment that's connecting the two together. And we're going to just upgrade all of our roads. So our original two lane roads will become highways. And the singular two lane road that we have in the between those two, we are going to use our medium industry road. So this will be our connection from our industrial area to our highway. And we're going to just bring that back up towards the train track just on the other side. Let's go to about here. I think that'll work well. And what I'd like to have on the other side here, very similar to what we have over here. I think this is also something that I put in in episode 24, where we have a cargo train terminal at the end here. And we have this little roundabout, I guess you could call it, or an oval about as it goes around here so that we can direct the traffic uh, through the area. So we can go in one way and make sure that the traffic comes along the road uh, from and approaches the cargo train terminal from the uh, cargo bin side of the building, just so we don't have any interference with traffic coming in, in and out of the building itself. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I don't want to overload our highway with traffic, so I'm going to make sure that they have a connection to uh, the train network. And I'm hoping that our uh, industrial area will use the train network to deliver goods to this area of the city, as well as the area of the city over here, and hopefully relieve some of the truck traffic that's going to be on the highway. But uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see how that ends up. So we're going to use the two lane one way industrial road for our roundabout at the end here. And I'm going to go across, um, let's say 450. So that's about one and a half large grid squares. And then I'm going to go one large grid square and two small grid squares up from that. And then just go across from there. We're also going to smooth out the corners and just like almost every other time I've had to smooth out corners, we can see that uh, we're we're going to be deleting quite a large section of road if we were just to delete it. So we are going to have to use uh, the, the roads uh, to cut those segments of road into smaller pieces. So I'm just going to go into the middle of these ones. It looked like I could delete some of these uh, other sections on the bottom here. I think that's, oh no, you can see that we have a refund of 157 here but a refund of 180 over here. So even then it's not quite the same. So I still can't go through and just delete these bottom segments over here. I am gonna still have to use the dirt road to try and delete those. So we are 120 away from this corner. So we'll go 120 away from that one as well. 120, Oh, that's not perfect. So we'll go up 90 degrees from there. There we go. 
So 135, 135, 135, 135, 135, etc. So they're all the same size now. So we can just go ahead and delete those. And then smooth out these corners a little bit uh, easier for our trucks to go through the area. Delete those extra dirt roads. There, now we have something that will be uh, good for our truck traffic to go through. And we're also going to go through and we are going to put in our cargo train terminal right now as well. So I'm going to put that in right there. I'm going to turn it off. Looks like our regional train track is a little bit lower than the cargo train terminal, but that's okay for right now. As I said, that is going to be uh, replaced at some point. This is all just temporary for now. So I'm not going to worry about leveling out the terrain too much. I just pull the train track across here and just connect it directly up. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that the game has put in the train tracks that I'd like. Um, if you'll recall from the episode that I put in the uh, large train terminal, the hub over here, if you put the train tracks at a certain angle, for some reason the game doesn't like to put in all of the train tracks. So I always go in and I zoom in and just double check to make sure that uh, the train tracks have actually been applied to the game. And then now from here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have some of these two lane uh, small industry roads. So we have our large collector road going through the area. And then we're just going to have a couple of these uh, two lane local roads going off of the large four lane collector road. We're going to go up across to here, 1050. Let's see what's going to be middle of that. Um, hmm be nice to have it all the way up here, but then I would have an intersection quite close to the uh, oval about up there. So I'm going to pull it back to say 900. Go across here like that. If I can get to 450, then from there, I think that's 450, I'm going to create a overpass. So we're going to come up uh, $670. I'm going to go down $670 and this should be lined up. Uh, and that way it's going to give our industrial truck traffic an option to go over this overpass rather than having to try and cross the four lanes of traffic going through the area here. Now I'm not going to extend anything too much. So I'm going to go just a little bit further on either side. Uh, but notice I'm not creating any more intersections along the uh, four lane collector road. And instead, we are just going to create some more uh, lanes just on the other side over here. And so what I'd also like to do is I would actually like to, I, I'm not sure how this is going to work, so we'll have to kind of see how it goes. Um, I'm not expecting a lot of traffic since our industrial area isn't that big. Uh, but for now, I think it would be uh, good for us to create a, um, a directional traffic route for the trucks going through the area. And I think that will work for what we want to do. So anybody coming into the industrial area will have to go around the circle here. And we'll do the same for the other side. There. And I'll give them a little bit more freedom uh, along this road that goes through the middle here and a little bit more freedom on the lanes that are going in and out of these two areas. We're also going to go ahead and we are going to adjust the junctions that are in the area. I did notice that some of our road maintenance vehicles are stopping at intersections along our four lane collector road. So I want to make sure I take those lights out and I'm going to put stop signs on either side uh, at the entrances into our two industrial zones over here. And we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, obviously, after we zone everything, it may end up being uh, not such a great idea, the layout that I have. So we will have to adjust it if that's the case. But as I mentioned, it's not really going to be that big of an industrial area. So we'll just have to wait and see how it looks once we zone it. I've also gone ahead and I have started to put in the uh, water infrastructure that's going underneath. 
And for now, I know it's not going to be directly underneath of a road. I am going to just have everything connected up to the pipe that's coming off of the other four lane collector road. And you may be asking uh, why or wondering why I am not connecting directly to this uh, four lane collector road right here. And the reason for that is I'm I'm worried that if I were to do that, most of the uh, truck traffic would be focused along this four lane collector road and we would overwhelm the intersection right here coming into the city. So by having it a little bit separated and by having the train traffic or the cargo train terminal over here, I should say, I'm hoping to split up some of the truck traffic going through the area and we're going to have um, some of the trucks going to the train here and some of the trucks going to the highway. Some of the trucks coming off of the highway at this interchange and others coming off of this interchange over here. So I'll have to wait and see how things kind of end up. But for now, this is kind of what the plan is. One last thing that I'd like to do before I start to zone the area is I'd like to paint a district around our industrial zone. And the reason for that is I'd like to put on the industry 4.0 policy. Most of the citizens in our city are high or well educated. So I want to make sure that the jobs that are available in our industrial area are uh, geared towards those citizens. So if we turn on the industry 4.0 policy, uh, the all the industry workplaces are for well and highly educated citizens. So by turning that on, we will have more jobs for the citizens that are in our city. And I think that will uh, develop the area quite well. I'd also like to make sure that we have services for the area. We could possibly rely on the services from the city itself, but they do have quite a fair distance to travel to get here. So I want to put in some dedicated services for the area. So that includes our medical clinic and our fire station, which is going to be pretty important. And I'm going to switch that to the other side, uh, just so that when cars uh, leave the station, that they are on the correct side of the lane here. And I'm also going to put on a police department. And I think that'll be good. Uh, actually, let's put also put in, while I'm thinking about it, we will put in a waste transfer facility just up a little bit over here. And again, it's going to be on the correct side of the lane so that when cars go in, they can travel along the lane right away. Looks like we're missing some electricity, so I will get that connected. I will, looks like we're going to also need electricity for our uh, train terminal over here anyway, so let's make sure that is all good so we'll connect everything up there and then run another line all the way over to our city over here see if i can get that connected up not sure that's going to be quite close enough let's pull it from up over here instead Ooh, that would bug me. <laughs> it's got to be, got to make sure that's at a nice angle there. There we go. Turn everything back on. It looks like we have no more electricity issues. Turn on our cargo train terminal, and then we will zone the area right here. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to zone too much. We're going to have, for right now, we're going to just zone inside of the squares. And then if we need to, I'll zone around the outside. And I think that will be enough for the city. At least I'm hoping that'll be enough for the city. So we'll have to kind of wait and see how it is. I've let the game run for a little while while I was editing the previous segments of the episode that I recorded. And our industrial area has turned out pretty nice so far. We're starting to see some of the buildings go up to level three. Uh, most of them are at level two on the verge of going to level three. And they are only missing... Let's see, this one's missing some educated citizens and this one is missing some service coverage. So I'll probably put a random service building in here just to get coverage for all of the buildings and hopefully have some more of them level up. Uh, as for traffic, it's really not too bad at all. We're starting to see a little bit of uh, busy traffic whenever a cargo train comes to drop off some cargo and all the trucks are leaving the terminal at the end of the road here, but that is to be expected and we're not seeing any backups at all at the moment. While we're here, let's actually take a look at the city statistics button and we can see that our uh, industrial area is actually a little bit higher than what I had originally planned. We're at 860 right now. And then because of that, we can go over to the main city over here and we can see that we are not having any of the um, not enough goods to sell and not enough food icons on the city. 
The only things that we're still seeing are these abandoned buildings, and that is only because they are historical buildings, so I have to go through and manually delete them. Had they not been historical, the game would automatically destroy and rebuild the buildings whenever the demand for that particular zone type was high enough. And as for the emergency shelters, we can take a look at this one right here. It's at, let's see, 62%, and that should be slowly dropping over time. There it goes back down to 61. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning, the food supply in the emergency shelters does decay slowly over time, and they will get continuous redeliveries of food. Uh, so eventually, if we sit here long enough, we should see a delivery truck arrive and drop off food and have the food supply go back up. And there we go, we just had a delivery and we went, uh, looks like we increased by 20%. I just saw another vehicle go in there, so I think our food is going to go up a little bit again after that. Well, maybe not. I think that was actually the waste collection truck that went in there, so uh, it's just picking up some garbage. It's probably some of the food that has decayed, I guess, over time. Uh, so everything is looking pretty good in the city. I will go through and I'll probably delete these um, historical buildings off camera and get everything kind of looking nice. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty happy with how our temporary industrial area has turned out. So I'm not going to do uh, too much on here anymore. As I said, it is uh, temporary just for now. And so we're going to leave it as it is until we are ready to make a more permanent industrial area just across the way over here. Now, as for our oil industry, the oil industry is a little bit different than the fishing, farming and forestry industries that we have over here in that this natural resource is not renewable. So we're, what we're going to do for now is we are going to create a fairly large uh, oil industry and we're going to cover this whole area with a uh, little bit of a road network so that we can have access to all of this oil that's underground here. And then eventually as we deplete this oil reserve, we are going to shrink our oil industry back down and then it's going to solely rely on imports of oil to run the industry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a temporary road network for now so that we can have access for uh, the oil industry to extract all of the oil that's in the ground. This is another temporary addition to our city, and it is solely here to develop our oil industry. It is designed in a way so that it has coverage over the oil reserve in the area. And don't worry, our oil industry is not going to be quite this big. It's not going to be a continuous set of buildings going through the area. And instead, what we're going to do is we are going to be moving our extractor buildings periodically throughout the area as the oil becomes depleted. So what we're going to do is we are, um, now that I'm seeing some of these road maintenance trucks going through the area, we're just going to take a look at our junctions. And we're going to take out these uh, stop lights at the intersections here and turn them into stop signs going off of the main road. I'm going to leave the uh, light right here because it is a connection between the two uh, collector roads. And then that should be good the way it is right now. So we're going to paint the area as an industrial area. So we'll go into the districts and areas tool and down to the paint industry area. And it's going to bring up our natural resources info view. So we're just going to cover the oil reserve in our um, industrial area paint tool. And then what we're also going to do is we are going to use the generic paint district uh, option here. And we are going to paint another district on top of our industrial district here. And the reason for that is not only are we going to use the oil industry from the industries DLC, but we're also going to use the industrial specializations from, I think it's from the vanilla game. And we are going to apply an oil industry specialization to our painted district. 
So not only now can we use the extractor buildings from the uh, industries DLC, we can also use the oil industry specialized zone buildings to extract and process our oil. So we're going to put the oil industry main building just on the end of the road over here. Just right on the edge. I've already gone ahead and I've put in all of our infrastructure, our electricity and our water going through the area. And it doesn't look like we're going to quite connect up to this uh, cable right here. So we'll just add another little extension. And that should be good for our oil industry. And right off the bat, we only have a few buildings available to us. So we do have these small oil pumps and we can see our production rate is 4,800 units per week. So I think we should put a few of those in there for now. And as we put um, the building on the ground over here, it's going to show us the amount of units per week that we are going to extract from the ground. So we can see all the way along this road, we are producing our maximum amount of 4,800 units. So I am just going to put a whole bunch right here. I'm going to space them a couple grid squares apart. And we'll go from there. Just put a couple more along across the road here. Looks like my water doesn't quite extend over to that one. Of course not. So go a little bit further. And so these will continuously uh, extract oil from the ground and we'll be able to see the reduction in our oil reserve over time. Now, obviously, these are the smaller of the oil extraction buildings that we can get. And as we level up our oil industry, we will eventually have uh, access to I'm not sure which one's the biggest. Uh, let's see this one. Large oil pump, 8000 units per week. Uh, large oil drilling rig, 9,600 units per week. So that might be actually our largest uh, production uh, extractor building that we can get. So eventually we will get to one of those. That's a level four. Uh, but until then, we will be relying on our small pumps to extract the oil. We can maybe take a look at the natural resources right now. I don't think we're going to see too much of a change as it is. Uh, we can maybe see a little bit right here. Uh, but over time, uh, I will show you periodic updates of the uh, oil reserve as it is, as we continue to extract oil from it. Let's just take a look at our uh, industry zone here. We can see that we have to produce 500 units of oil and have 150 workers. So while we're at it, let's put in a couple more buildings. Let's just throw on some oil sludge pyrolysis plants. Uh, let's put them along our main roads over here. What else do we have? We have some uh, small crude oil tank farms. So we will also put these uh, just off of the main road, I think. Just like that. I think that will work well for us. So what we'll see is we'll see uh, the trucks once they've... Oh, let's actually take out this stop sign over here. That is starting to be a problem. Uh, so what we'll see is that we will see some of these trucks coming, uh, maybe not quite right away to our um, to our production facilities and our tank farms over here. Let's get our utilities set up. No water. Oh, I didn't connect uh, all of the water pipes together, so we'll just do that. There we go. That should be good. Okay. We'll keep these on balance for now. And we'll just give it a little bit of time and we will level up this oil industry. Oh, looks like we're having a fire already in the oil industry. That's not really a good sign. I don't think I put in any of the emergency services. So I will throw some of those in right now, especially the fire department. Seems like it would be something important to have. So we'll put it right here. We'll uh, take advantage of being able to miraculously put a fire department right across the street from where we have our fire. And we're also going to put in a few of these fire watch towers, I think would be a good idea.
And then make sure our new fire... Oh, why is this not connected? Looks like we have the cables going right across the zone here, but we don't have an actual tower in where the electricity is needed. So it looks like we'll have to place one. Let's see if I can delete this now. There we go. There we go. I think that should be good. It looks like we're getting coverage from our uh, fire helicopters as well, which is a good sign. Oh yeah, see this uh, this fire department, this firehouse, as I talked about on the previous one, it's actually not on the right side of the road. So whenever the uh, fire trucks leave the fire department, they are actually on the opposite side of the road and then they have to go and they have to turn around and then they can come fight the fire over here. So let's, just because we have lots of money, let's put another fire department directly across the street right here. Why not? And then we'll have coverage as it is. All right, I think now we just gotta give it a little bit of time and level this up to uh, level five. Uh, I'll check back here in a couple minutes and see what we're up to. Uh, let me just take a look at the natural resources. So you can see uh, it's actually a little bit sooner than I thought, but you can actually see the change in the oil reserve around the pumps that we've got. Uh, you can see that it's starting to deplete and we can check the production of these uh, oil reserves and they're still actually producing at 4,800. So eventually we're gonna have an issue here where our oil pumps aren't gonna be producing as much and we'll get a warning icon to let us know and we'll have to shift them to another area. It didn't take us too long to level up to level two, and we are also already starting to see some of the not enough natural resources icons appearing above our small oil pumps. So taking a look at these small oil pumps, we can see that our rate of production has dropped from, I think it was 4,800 down to 288 units per week. And we can look at all the other pumps in the row that we have here. This one's at 1,200. This one's over here at 2688, uh, 2112. Uh, so we are starting to see quite a reduction in the production of oil at those pumps. On the natural resource of info view, we can see that uh, the oil reserve is depleted in that area or starting to be depleted in the area at least. And so what we're gonna do is we are just gonna move these buildings. So we're gonna go to this one that has not enough natural resources. And then we're just going to pull it further along the road and we can see that our estimated uh, production rate is back up to 4500 already uh, just not too far away from the last uh, oil pump that we already have in that row so we'll just slide this along over to the next section and that's what we're going to have to continuously do as we go and we uh, go through the area and we extract all the oil but obviously, eventually, uh, now that we're level two, we can take a look at some of the other buildings that we had av available to us. And so we have also unlocked the small oil drilling rig, which has a production rate of 6,400 units per week. So we might as well start putting in some of those. And we can see at the edge of the depleted area from the small oil pumps that even our small oil drill rig is producing uh, roughly three, 4,000 units per week just at the edge. And it does look uh, not too dark in that area already. So uh, we're not gonna be too picky about uh, making sure we get every single drop of oil. Uh, so we're gonna just put a couple along the other road just over here. Make sure we got those spaced out nicely. I'll just adjust this one a little bit. And I'm not really sure about how far apart they should be. Uh, this might even be too close. We could probably get away with something a little bit further apart, uh, but I'm really not worried too much about the cost at this point. I kind of just want to make sure that I get all the oil extracted so that we can convert this into our industrial area. So I was also thinking about the fire departments that I put in. I want to make sure that's a little bit nicer before we continue on too much further. So what I'll do is I will just extend this road a little bit and put a T-junction just at the end. Um, make that a little bit bigger. Let's see if that's even 300 and 330. Of course not. Uh, so we'll just go to 300 on the other side here. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one of these fire departments right in the middle there. I'll delete the other one. Make sure we extend our electricity. And then make sure we have water coverage and we're maybe just right on the edge. So I'll extend that pipe a little bit. And this way, <clears throat> instead of having two fire departments really close together, we can have one at the end here. And as soon as they leave the firehouse, they will be able to tend to any sort of fires that we have here. So I think that would be also a good idea over on this side over here. We'll just extend this a little bit, put another T junction just at the end, and then we'll put our second fire department just over here. Extend our utilities, make sure it has coverage. We should be good on water. And that should cover most of what we have over here. Now, obviously uh, we can have a pretty big fire here. We have lots of trees. And I'm not sure if these buildings uh, by default are a little bit more susceptible to fire or not. Uh, but uh, just in case, we do now have two fire departments. And it looks like our uh, oil industry just leveled up to level three. So what do we have else? What else have we unlocked? We now have these large oil pumps. So we might as well throw a few of those in there. So we'll put them on the next street over. And uh, try and offset them from the others, just for something a little bit different. Check our electrical coverage, our water coverage, and that's good. And we're also starting to see some more of these not enough natural resources icons popping up on the other smaller oil uh, pumps over here. So we'll just slide them along. And eventually I am going to remove all of these uh, small oil pumps and have more of these larger oil pumps or lo larger uh, oil drilling rigs just so that it's, you know, obviously it's going to be very tedious <laughs> if I have to move all of these small oil pumps along the road. And instead I'll just have some bigger ones and only have to move them a couple times. So we'll take a look at the natural resources in the area. We can see that we're slowly but surely uh, taking advantage of the oil reserve and we are depleting it over time. Here's another one that we can move over. So as I mentioned earlier, we can also take advantage of the oil industry specialization in the generic industry. So what I'm going to do is I am going to zone some of the area over here as uh, the industrial zone. And because we have the oil specialization on here, it will uh, give us some oil extraction buildings. So I'll just zone a segment there and uh, let's do another one just right beside it. Why not? Looks like we maybe zoned a little bit too much on this one. So we'll do four grid squares, four grid squares. So I think that will be plenty. And so what I've actually found out is that if you zone a specialized industry on top of that resource, uh, that zoned industry will give you the extraction buildings of that natural resource. But if you zone a specialized industry building on an area that does not have that natural resource, it will give you the production buildings for that particular natural resource. So now that I'm thinking about it also, I want to make sure I put on the industry 4.0 policy to make sure that we have uh, enough of the high and uh, well-educated jobs for our citizens. And so what we'll see here is we can also go into the natural resources tab and we can monitor the uh, natural resources in the area here. And we'll see that over time, the uh, buildings that the industry has zoned here will be the extraction buildings and then the oil will deplete over time. And eventually, once the oil becomes depleted, uh, these buildings will convert from extraction buildings into production buildings. All right, so it didn't take too long and pretty much all of our extraction buildings that used to be along this stretch of road right here have now converted into production buildings. 
So if you'll recall, they used to be uh, mostly derricks and things like that, but now they are uh, buildings called, lots of buildings called Plastic Perfection, uh, Refined Oil Company, things like that. What do we got else over here? Uh, goods from Oil LTD. And uh, so hopefully that time lapse was able to show um, a little bit about what happens when you run out of the natural resource. So we'll take a look at the natural resource info view and we can see that now we have a strip of land along this road here that is now uh, white. So it's showing that there is no more oil in the area. So we just had another building over here convert into a production building rather than an extraction building. But uh, as you can also see, we are starting to have some issues with traffic. So that is not really very surprising given that we have a large amount of buildings in this kind of a small area right here. So what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, dezone a large section of these buildings. So we'll get rid of most of these uh, just to help relieve some of the traffic. And instead what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna rezone some of them just over across the way. So we'll have some here and we'll put a couple here. We'll put a couple at the end of the road over here. And the reason for that is we're just gonna spread out some of the traffic and then we're gonna make sure that we don't have too many traffic issues. I mean, obviously, as I said earlier, this is a temporary area, so it doesn't really matter that much, uh, but I'd like to make sure that everything is running relatively smoothly so that we can extract the oil as quick as possible. And as I said before, start zoning this into our new industrial area. So I think for now that is going pretty good. Uh, another thing that I've done off camera just before I started filming this next segment is I've started to remove some of the smaller uh, oil extraction buildings from the industrial zone. Uh, we do have now these large oil drilling rigs, which I believe previously was going to be the largest uh, production rate extraction building. There's also the offshore oil drilling platform, which is 11,200 units per week, uh, but we don't have anything that is offshore. So our highest on land to production building is going to be the large oil drilling rig. And I've started putting in a few of those right over here. And I'm going to continue putting in more of those as soon as uh, this area is uh, extracted and, and depleted. And we'll just go through and we will continue to go along the road network that we've developed uh, so that we can extract all the oil. So you can see the significant reduction in truck traffic now that I've uh, converted it to just this one strip of uh, buildings just over here. And I'm a bit more happy with that. Everything is going a much smoother than what we had before. So I think um, we'll just leave it here for now. And this is something that we're gonna periodically get back to uh, throughout the next uh, couple episodes. I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for us to extract all of the oil here. And uh, I don't wanna just sit here and do that. So instead we will just revisit it uh, periodically as we go through and do other uh, things in the city in the next couple episodes. So we got some buildings starting to go in over here. We're just gonna make sure that they have enough electricity and the water should be okay, so that's not an issue. And again, uh, they are starting as extraction buildings. Oh no, they are not starting as extraction buildings. These are goods from oil. Let's take a look at the natural resources info view. And we're just on the edge here. So I guess it's kind of uh, a little bit random in terms of uh, what kind of buildings we're gonna get. I think these ones over here, the pumping is our business buildings. So these are extraction buildings. Uh, it's too bad it doesn't actually say uh, what type of building it is, if it's either extraction or production. You have to kind of guess from the name. So goods from oil, I'm gonna assume that that is a production building rather than an extraction building. Uh, but we can you know, just take a look at the uh, natural resources info view and keep an eye on everything and see how it goes. We can also see that the pollution that we originally created from the small oil uh, pumps over here has started to dissipate. It's already pretty much gone. Um, so that's that's what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna go through, we're gonna extract the oil, we're gonna pollute, uh, we're gonna give it a little bit of time and that's gonna dissipate. And then we're gonna just go through and we are gonna do a bit of a remediation and we're gonna destroy all of our roads and and things like that. And then we're gonna put another industrial district in the area to support the commercial businesses of the city. And as we found out, we really don't need anything that's too big. Uh, this is already supporting the town as it is. So eventually we may need something that is a little bit bigger because obviously our city is gonna be a little bit bigger than what it is right now. 
Uh, but we're also going to put in some of the unique factory buildings from the Industries DLC. So we'll have a mix of, of everything in this area right here. But uh, that is definitely for a future episode. And with that, that'll be the end of this episode. We've successfully created a temporary industrial area to support the commercial businesses and emergency shelters of the city. In the event of a natural disaster, our citizens will be able to retreat to the emergency shelters and not have to worry about food. We've also created a oil industry across the highway, and we've started to extract from the large oil reserve in that area. Eventually, as that oil reserve becomes depleted, we will convert it into a more permanent industrial area. But until then, we will periodically shift the oil extractors throughout the road network until it is depleted. Thank you all very much for watching this episode. Please let me know what you thought about it down below with either a like, dislike, or a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this episode, don't hesitate to subscribe if you haven't already for some more City Skylines content in the future, and I'll see everybody in the next episode.